All right, everybody, welcome back. Today's project, we're gonna tackle the steering column. Uh, it's something I've been needing to do to this thing because uh, she's not really protected, you know, because you can just start it with a screwdriver. So I've got the new steering column right here on the back of the truck. I've been slowly going through it, checking it over, seeing what I need to take off and get ready before I go ahead and swap it into the truck. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, it seems like. Shouldn't be terrible. Um, I did, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but I was turned on to a website called car-part.com. Uh, if you're looking for anything out of a junkyard or something like that, check them out. Not sponsored by them, but it's pretty cool. You can actually enter in the year, make a model of your vehicle, put your location in, and it'll give you search results for that kind of part out of all the local junkyards in the area. And you just phone them up, tell them what you're getting, and you're good to go. So I did get this out of a junkyard. I think I paid like 150 bucks for it. Not a bad deal. It's a pretty good steering wheel. Very nice and clean. That's why I went with it. Uh, when they cut it out of the, uh, the Dodge that it was in, they did cut the harnesses, but these guys are smart and they cut it on the ends that you don't need. The ends are already in the truck, so all you got to do is just use your original harnesses and plug it in. Uh, the one thing I am going to replace is this, the ignition module, because I did buy a new one and... I might as well swap it out while I'm in here because you got to take this bracket off. It's a Torx fitting and then the uh, the screws are two different sizes. So be careful when you're taking it out. Pay attention to where they came out. But you got to take this off and then the screws are right back here. There's two of them. And then you can pull the ignition module out of there. And I'm like I said, I'm going to swap it out because I already bought it. So getting down here inside the truck. It's actually kind of convenient because I don't have the seats in. So I got plenty of room to work on this. Uh, if you are going to do this project, if you want to yank your seats out for better clearance and all that, I would recommend it because there's a lot of room. Show you what we got going on. So you can see here the, uh, the damage that this thing has gotten from when they stole it. They busted the ignition out. They broke all sorts of parts and stuff under here but the guts of it are still okay so like i said when the salvage yard that i bought it from the new column uh it was still in the vehicle and they didn't take it out until i paid for it which is fine and then when they took it out they basically just cut the uh, wire harnesses here so inside your truck you still have all this it's just going to plug right in which is good so if you get an unexperienced place and they cut the wrong ends or something you're going to be in trouble or if you need these wires make sure you let them know but here's the new ignition module I'm going to swap over. Pretty straightforward. Down underneath, you got one bolt here, another bolt here, and then way up under here, you got another bolt right up there, and then one right there. They are all 13 millimeter, including that bolt, the keeper bolt that holds the shaft in there. So, should be an easy swap, hoping everything goes well, and uh, we get this thing taken care of, and I can actually start my truck with a key, instead of the old screwdriver. But, let's go ahead and get started on this, and uh, get it out here and get swapped out. So, one of the first things we're going to disconnect is the shift linkage, run down the transmission. Uh, all that was, all you need, flathead screwdriver, stick it up behind here. Pop the ball socket off of there. This will pop off right down here. This white clip will be pushed in, pull it down. Two prongs on, on this piece, squeeze them together. Push that down through. You've got one connection right here. Pull down your safety on there. Squeeze the tab on the bottom unhook that then you can kind of finagle this thing around here that out there. and then we're just going to kind of set this off to the side right now uh, for your tow haul button wire harness goes right back to here so we're just going to unhook that unplug there this is all connected so we're going to leave that and we'll also Bring this wire down and we'll just kind of set it right here for now. Main controls, we'll get this wire out of here. Get 
So because we're gonna replace this and this is already out, all we're gonna have to do, normally you would have to pull this off. Um, it's real simple. Red connector, pull that back, and then just jimmy this thing out. We'll unhook these two connectors. So that's good. It'll come up top. Connector here. Pull that back. All right. So main guts of the wire harness is now disconnected. Uh, if you are going to work on this, make sure you unhook your battery and let it sit for a minute so that your airbag doesn't blow up in your face. It shouldn't, but you know, with our luck, it probably would. So now that we got all the wires out of the way, we're going to drop the bolts, pull this bad boy out of here. Um, make sure too that you take that out because that's connecting it to the steering linkage. Another thing you should try to do um, when removing this, is make sure the steering wheel doesn't spin around like crazy or you will break the clock spring in it. Uh, I don't know how many times the steering wheel's been turned in the new one. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that it's broken. Um, you can pull everything apart and then re-clock it and put it back in, which I might do if I have an airbag light, I'll know that it is broken. So I don't have an airbag light with this one, so I know the clock spring in this one is good. So worst case scenario, put the new one in, it's broken or it breaks, but I still have the clock spring in the original steering column. So when I take this one out, I just got to make sure that the steering wheel doesn't start spinning like crazy. I want to lock it in place. And that way, if I do have to replace it, I won't have to buy the part. I already have a good one in there. connector back here that ain't good I pretty much almost forgot this there's one last connection right down here just gotta unplug it so don't forget that one all right so we might be in good shape here I was able to check the clock spring tension and it seems like it's good it doesn't seem like it's broken we won't really know until we get it in plug it in and see if we got an airbag light but let me show you what I did so Pulled the old one out, zip tied it down so it doesn't want to spin, right? What I did on the new one, you can turn this whole assembly really slowly, really carefully, and you'll get all the way to the end of it and you'll feel the tension on that clock spring start to build up. And if you just kind of slowly rock it a little bit, you'll feel that it won't want to turn. So you know that's the dead end of it. So then all I did was took my hazard button which was back here just held my finger here rotated it the other direction and counted the number of turns it's five turns from one end of the clock spring all the way to the other so if you split that to two and a half rotations you've got perfect dead center you're good to go i zip tied it down to hold it in place we should be good like i said i won't know until i actually put it in and hook it up and kick the key on if there's no airbag light then i know i'm good so i know that a full rotation from side to side on the clock springs five rotations cut that in half two and a half turns you're dead center should be good so fingers crossed this works if not like i said the other one i know is still good and i've got it centered and locked in with the zip tie so it won't turn so at worst case this one's bad we'll swap it out but we should be we should be good because like I said when I turned it if you turn it really slowly and really carefully you can feel that tension on that clock spring so you know you're at the end of its travel and then just go the opposite way count the turns you're good to go so I went ahead and started cleaning this one up getting all the old fur and whatever stuck in there out of it and uh, let's go ahead and get her bolted back in so far pretty simple process uh, it does help that I don't have a seat in the front so there's plenty of room to kind of lounge out while you're doing this but so far so good 
Let's dive back in and get this thing bolted up. I thought we were a team here. You guys didn't tell me. Don't forget to switch this over. None of you guys said anything. What's going on? Gotta help me out. I forget things. Come on, help me. So, let's go ahead and swap this over. We'll be good to go. So like I was saying, gotta take these two bolts out. They are a different size, so make sure you pay attention. That one's short and stubby. That one's a long one. Swing this guy out the way. Got the four bolts in, got the linkage back in, just gotta tighten this down, plug the wire harnesses back in, put the uh, shift cable linkage back in, and test it out. I mean, this is really, hasn't been a terrible project. This has actually been pretty nice. Ah, well, that sucks. Oh well. It's like that on my other one too, it's just a little tear right there. Hopefully you'll never see it. All right, let's get this buttoned up. So now we're just gonna go through, reconnect our harnesses, and we should be good. One more thing that I forgot to mention, the new steering column did not come with an airbag. So I do have to swap everything over. Uh, easiest way to get to them, right on the back, there's two, whoops, there's two 10 millimeter bolts. They go into the back of this. You got air, uh, your horn wire and your two airbag wires. And they are color coded, one's black, the other's brown. And on the back of your airbag, same thing, black and brown, and your horn. So we'll swap this over, and we should be done. Fingers crossed, folks. And no 
no horn. Well, that's great. Okay, we don't need that. Well, let's dive into that and see what's going on with that. Right, so, messing with the horn. I don't know if you can hear it, but it does ring out, so we have connection. Uh, could just be a fuse or something. Or, I don't know, maybe they decided to sell the horn for $1.50 and uh, buy a hot dog. I don't know. So, this is good. We'll put this back together. And we'll have to start checking fuses and seeing if something else has popped. So, so far, so good. I mean, it's, it starts with the key, no lights. Awesome upgrade. Now that all the guts are back in there. What's up everybody? Um, so I just got home from Colorado and I was kind of working on putting the video together for this build and I noticed that I just stopped filming. Not really sure what happened, but I guess I got sidetracked, I don't know. But the good news is I pulled this apart. You saw in the last part where I checked the continuity of it and the horn switch was working and it turns out the fuse on it was gone. So we have a horn again. Um, I have taken this thing out, drove it around for a while, tested things out on it, all the buttons still work i got cruise control uh this one doesn't have the buttons on the back or anything for like the radio so and i didn't replace it with that because i am going to go with just an aftermarket radio so i didn't really worry about that um other than that everything seemed to go in really well if this is a project you're planning on doing at home um taking the seat out i mean that was just something i had already done because i was cleaning up the interior anyway but not having the seat in here probably makes it a lot easier rather than crawling around with this thing in the way but I do know that the seat, the way I did it, I took it out in one whole unit instead of taking each little piece apart. Um, it just seemed easier for me to do that. So, I mean, if you're doing this at home, you're going to do a steering column and you don't want to take the seat out in all in one piece. You can try to get your arms up in here and unbolt it one, you know, one little piece at a time. But uh, it seemed to work out really good. And if it's something you want to do and you want to take your seat out to it because then you can clean underneath it. I mean, why not? You know, makes it a little bit easier. But as far as the steering column went, very easy project to do. Um, like I said, I did find the steering column off of a website. It was car-part.com. Um, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. It's just pretty cool if you're looking for stuff from the junkyard. It saves you a lot of time from having to drive around from junkyard to junkyard or call them and see if they even have it. Um, this way it's just directly listed on there and then you call them up, say you want it, and they pull it out and you're good to go. But everything works. Tow haul button works, shifter works, turn signals, blinkers, wipers, all that good stuff. Everything's good. So still got to put the dash back together. There's a couple more parts I got to source out. The uh, the bezel that goes around here was damaged from when they stole it. The knee bolster down under here was damaged. And then the little side pieces over here were all damaged. Um, I did look online for a new, it's the cigarette lighter, but it's plastic. So it's all melted out on mine. Um, I'm not sure if I want to just put the old one back in there or just see if I can find a used one. So other than that, everything on this project's come together really well. I do need to hurry up and get it movable and like movable safely. Um, the ball joints on this thing are just trashed. So that's all got to get replaced. I do have the new control arms they came in. Uh, they got the new ball joints in them. And I really got to get moving on this thing, get this thing done because fall is coming. And after deer season, the old Jeep is coming in. We're gonna do a nice overhaul on it, make sure everything's good, fix some of the issues I found out in Colorado with it, and uh, get that thing ready for maybe another trip back out there. I don't know, we gotta see what comes of it. But uh, super pumped at how that went. If you guys are following along with the builds and how everything's going, I am gonna start putting out some of the Colorado videos here in the next couple weeks. Um, I've got a massive amount of footage and pictures from that trip. So I got to figure out how I'm going to break them all down. I want to do like, you know, uh, introductions to trails and all that. So if you're ever out in those areas, so that'll give you a, a nice good view of, of what to expect on those trails. But as for now, we're going to get back on the truck here, get this thing, uh, get this thing cleaned up, fixed up and ready to get on the road and actually start having some fun with it so that I can get the Jeep in, tear it down and all that good stuff through the winter. But, uh, yeah pretty much it for now you guys stay tuned for more upcoming videos um if you're new here make sure you go back through check out the playlist check out some of the older videos i know youtube really pushes the popular ones but i do have other videos out there kind of chilling just uh take a look at those and yeah good times a lot of projects need to be uh touched up and finished up and uh 
we're going to keep pushing on. So as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.